Well, I'd like to thank the A4M for having me here. Um, uh, thanks for um, being here this afternoon. Um, I'm going to uh, do my best to stand at this podium to try to let you hear me better, but I typically like to rove and lets me makes me talk better. So um, let's get started. Um, basically, I want to rapidly go through uh, methylation with you. Okay, methylation is something if you don't know much about, you're not going to do very well with your patients with neurological syndromes. Methylation has become a lot more complex than just the MTHFR gene, so I titled this talk that methylation's role in neurological health, aging, and recovery, and beyond the MTHFR. Basically, what I'm going to do is give you an overview of methylation, review the polymorphisms, but what I really want you to understand is how severe this affects you and how we can actually uh, overcome this with supplementation. So what I want to really get to is the pearls that will help you in your practice, okay? What I will tell you is neurological diseases are rampant in our society. They probably affect up to 40% uh, of individuals in the society. And if you add the immunological syndromes, you're probably talking 50%. Migraines, dizziness, vertigo, fibromyalgia, neuralgia, neuropathy, seizure disorder, post-concussion syndrome, neurological cancers, anxiety disorders. How many of you have this or know somebody with this? Okay. So what I like to say is everybody knows somebody. A lot of the disorders you may not be aware of that have a lot of impact with methylation, asthma, psoriasis, food sensitivities, hypothyroidism, chronic fatigue, cancer, autoimmune disorders. Well, you get the point. Now, the reason... I um, basically started into this problem is because so many people who have neurological syndromes who see me wind up having immunological syndromes, and if you can't fix one, you can't fix the other. So I created a term which you will learn called neuroimmune syndromes, and neuroimmune, thank you so much. Now I can wander. I think so much better when I do this way. Please forgive me. Do you have that clicker, doctor? Perfect, thank you. Can you hear me fine now? Let me come down here. I don't like to be so formal with this, so I apologize. And like I said, I talk much better when I'm moving. Now. Methylation is basically adding a methyl group to um, a chemical substrate, and there's over 200 biochemical processes in the body that require methylation, okay? Now, I've decided to make this really easy on you because even me, being a methylation expert, I don't know all those pathways, and neither do you, okay? You might be able to figure them out, but basically, it's really involved in major functions like neurotransmitter production, cell turnover and repair, Membrane function, energy function, and immune function. Now, how many of you think this is important? Okay. Now, so if we have a problem with methylation, we affect cellular delivery, epigenetics, intracellular functionality, all the things that matter to us, which means you can balance the hormones perfectly. But if you've got a methylation deficiency, the cell cannot carry out what the cell is supposed to do. Do you understand? Okay, so why do you fail sometimes? The hormones look great, but the patient doesn't feel any better. Anybody have that? Okay. Now, I created this slide to give you an idea. So methylation comes off the methionine pathway. You see SAMI and all this, and it feeds 200 methylation functions, but basically you've got to remember six of them. Dopamine status, serotonin status or limbic status, Krebs cycle, mitochondrial function, phospholipid, DNA histone methylation, and arginine methylation for nitric oxide. Okay? Do you understand? Now, what's really confusing is most people don't, do not understand the folate metabolism pathway. Folic acid and B12 are important cofactors, right? Okay? Now, they are water soluble cofactors, right? So, what's the problem with the nervous system and the immune system? They're covered in fat. And you know, certain cells actually cannot absorb folic acid because there are two types of folic acid receptors. There's a membrane-bound folic acid receptor, which is on most cells. But then when you get over here to the nervous system and immune system and mitochondria, you have a reduced folate carrier, which requires a form of folic acid called methyl tetrahydrofolate. You understand? Now, 
Folic acid has to enter a cell, be converted by the MTHFR enzyme into methyl tetrahydrofolate, which is the only form that can feed the nervous system, the immune system, and the mitochondria. So giving folic acid supplementation to somebody who has a D3 